start by saying we were all our praise. We just went through, like somebody was saying, Jesus' birthday and celebrated that. But if you don't realize that he's the greatest gift that this planet has ever received, then you miss something.
preach the gospel. The gospel, if you do not know, it means good news. It uh, is not uh, uh, these, the seven deadly sins. It is not about abomination, and it's not about the end of the world, things that's going to happen that are bad to you or anything else. It's the good news. Okay? Good news brings a good message. And the messenger of the covenant, that's what he's done. I'm going to start with that. Well, I might start at the beginning of the book. I'm going to try to move fast. So I'll pick some scripture that might seem unrelated, but I'll tell you this. When God begins to open your eyes, and he begins to speak to you in your spirit. And when I say open your eyes, I'm not talking about natural eyes. I'm talking about spiritual eyes. Because what he does is he quickens the spirit within the man. You see, man is a triune. He's body, he's soul, and he's spirit. And in the unbeliever, such as what happened to Adam when he died within him and the communion was broken. That's why when God came, as he always did, to talk with Adam after he had eaten from the tree because he was disobedient, there was a death in Adam. It was called the spiritual death. And so when God came to speak to him, Adam ran and hid himself because of guilt and shame. Remember the whole thing about he was innocent? After he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he noticed he was naked. God said to him, who told you you was naked? Hmm. So he starts pointing fingers. That woman you gave him. <laughs> he actually blamed God. <laughs> one mistake, one failure, spiritual connection broken, and immediately he begins to point his finger at God. You know that people do that all the time. And I'm going to tell you this, just from the bottom of my heart. God is the greatest lover that there ever is. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> he knows you despite yourself. He knows you better than you know yourself. He created you. He put dreams and desires down on the inside of you to be who you were created to be. The sad thing is most of us lose that somewhere in the mix. We lose our true identity because we were born for greatness. We were born to, to have the Spirit of God, to be containers of the Spirit of God and to move with God's mind and think like God and do things God does. Because we're created in His image and His likeness, we bear His very nature. I think that whole image thing is what that's talking to, the very image of God. But the whole thing about Losing your identity or stumbling around in the darkness. Uh, that's a sad place to be. I was there for many years. And then I'm living like a heathen and doing everything that I should do. And knowing it too. I mean, I call that living contrary. To believe one thing and do something else. Uh, and, and it's just a tough place to be because you're in misery all the time. And it makes you mean as hell. <laughs> thing about Jesus is he will love the hell out of you. Some of you are hungry out there. So you're not hidden in the right place because we understand and we have the answer for you. And for you newcomers, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm just going to speak to every one of you like you've never met me and you don't know me at all. Okay? Two plus two equals shh. Well, everybody shout it out. Now, I know what teachers taught you. See, teachers teach you to be dependent upon your five senses. And that there is an order in this world and that we all got to abide by it. And then they belittle you and take cheap shots at you. And you go through all kinds of things in your life. People scream at you and tell you you're no good and you're worthless and you'll never amount to nothing. I break those words right now. If you're sitting in this house and those negative things have been spoken to you, I break those right now in Jesus' name. Because you were destined for greatness and you are somebody. You have more value than all of creation. All the entire visible universe. One soul is more valuable than all of that. Want to know why I move in grace? Because of souls. Because that's God's mission. 
What did what was what was what did Jesus want? What was his inheritance? What did he ask of God? He said, "Give me the nation." He didn't say nation. He didn't say one tribe or one tongue or one kindred over here. He wants the entire globe. You see, in God there is no boundaries. You see, a child over in Israel or in South America or right here in the backyard of California, they're all God's children and there is no boundaries with Him. Do we have a responsibility to our own people? Yes, indeed we do. But if God tells you to go, then you go. If He tells you to stay, then by George, you better stay. Don't let somebody run you out of your place. Don't somebody, don't let somebody make you feel like you can't cut it or you're not welcome or anything else. Let me tell you something. I take God's stands. You are welcome in this house. I don't know why I said that either, but I feel it. I'm feeling in the spirit, all right? Our message is waiting right here. I'm going to get to it. Good. Fervently? Huh? Fervently? Fervently. Fervent. I, when I hear that word fervent, I think of fire. I think of heat. It's fervent. Right there. Love one another with, with fer fervently with a pure heart. That means with heat and passion love one another. Not because they deserve it. Not because they're on your good side. This is where you've got to kick in to the 
were the ones that don't deserve it. You don't like them. And it's okay not to like some people. Amen. But in Christ, you got to love them. Say, like, ooh, ladies. I said, it's okay not to like somebody. You don't have to like their lifestyle. Do you know that you can support somebody and not agree with everything they do? Amen. That's what spiritual people do. Believers need to become believers. Sometimes, you know, I can call myself a believer because sometimes I don't believe. Well, there's a lot of things I don't believe, but I don't believe in the devil. Okay, go and get your underwear on, bud. I know he exists, but I don't believe in him. He ain't got nothing coming for me. And even if he does something in our lives, I'm not going to give him credit for it because he's a punk and a liar and a thief and a good man.
God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I'm going to ask you a question because God did this to me one day when I thought I was about to do it all. And he said, now, that in the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth, was that the visible heavens or the invisible heavens? He messed up my world. I didn't even have the first understanding of the first verse in the holy book. Because I'm like, ugh. And he began to speak to me. Look, Donnie. The heavens that are outside of the heavens, where I dwell, always was. There is no beginning for them. So in the beginning, where I'm bringing you the book, we're talking about the finite construct, the physical realm, the entire visible universe, whether you can see it or not. It's tangible. So when he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, he's talking about all the visible realm and the heavens. There are scriptures in the Bible that talks about the visible heavens and the invisible heavens. We were taught, we were, we sung about the visible heavens and the invisible heavens tonight. Do you know that? We sung a lot about the heavens open up and don't shut the heavens. Those are the invisible heavens. Some of us want to see into the invisible realm. You've got to have spiritual eyes to see invisible things. Invisible don't mean you can't see them. you just got to have the right eye to see the invisible. You have to have an invisible set of eyes to see invisible things. You've got to have invisible ears. That's why Jesus spoke to him and he says, just like the prophet said, with ears you don't hear and with eyes you don't see. Somebody go, ooh, is he going to read the scripture or not? <laughs> so in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. All the physical universe was being created. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And other, some translations, some, some, some biblical translations talks about how chaos covered the deep. Everything was in chaos and turmoil because it was being formed and created. Then God said, Who's that? Who is the word of God? Jesus. <coughs> the Bible says that he was in the beginning with God. And he is the word. And all things that were made were made by him. And without him, not anything was made. So it took Jesus. But his name wasn't Jesus then. He was the word of God. Coexisted. And co-equal with the Father and the Spirit. Does this all make sense to you? Are we doing all right here? Maybe I should have went to seminary. I'll tell you what, all you need is the Bible and the Spirit of God. Some of you need to cherish that book. Just because you got 15 copies, you need to read one of them. What did I say? You over here, brother? It is your meat potatoes to the spirit man. There's been times in my life where I would have been ashamed to have somebody reach in and pull out my spirit and stand inside my physical body because my spirit was so anorexic. You need to feed the spirit. <laughs> and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you see, I want to preach Jesus out of this. Can I do that? Yeah, we see he's the word. And we were in chaos and darkness covered our soul because we had been born into a world where there was no spirit in us and we needed spiritual life. And the spirit of God brooded over us, hovered over our man and watched over us while we was in our darkness and began to speak into us and the darkness and the chaos begin to go, and the light begin to come, and you said, oh, thank you, Jesus. How was that? Okay. The entire Old Testament brings forth the Word of God, brings forth Jesus. Malachi was the last, you can call it Malachi if you're from the back, that's all right, if you're from, you know, from real and yeah, that's another country. You know. Got a lot of friends over there. <laughs> okay, Malachi 3 1, respect to real. 
It's the last book. And after that book was written, there was a 400 cycle period before Jesus busted onto the scene. And the Apostle Paul put it like this when fullness of time had come. Somebody say fullness of time. In other words, all the time had been completed and the end of the world was coming upon the earth because all the time of the law and the prophets were coming to a close and all that was promised was about to descend on planet earth and the Lord was about to appear in the form of a human being. How is it that deity, that God, the word himself can take on human flesh and still be fully God? I don't know, but he did it. Thank God. <laughs> but he's God. You guys like this? It's all right. Three one. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. Was that last week we were talking about the suddenness of God? Yeah. Well, that's the same way Jesus showed up. He showed up. And suddenly there was a host of angels declaring peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Well, this is what the prophet is declaring right here. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Thank God he came. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand with, when he appears? For he is like a finer's fire. In a longer soap. <laughs> Have any of you ever just been in a place or did some stuff, and even in your heathen life, and you felt so dirty, you knew you had to get clean, and maybe you didn't know how to get to God, so you just went home and got some good soap and stood in a hot shower thinking it might help. That you were like, I've been there. I just wanted to clean, but it just couldn't get all the way in until I accepted Jesus. Because he doesn't stop cleaning from the outside in, which, by the way, some churches try to do. He cleans you from the inside out. He's a bonder or so. He's a refiner's fire that burns out all the dross and scrubs you clean. What did the prophet Isaiah say? He goes, come, let us reason about this. He said, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. And you get that, that, that clean look. You know how you got them white towels and bleach them and everything and they come out with that good soap and they're just fluffy and white again? That's the, when you get down on the inside of your heart. Darkness is gone. And I will, I, you know what? I'm not going to let anything come around me or get it. It's going to bring that darkness back. We need to shun the dark and run to the light. Darkness covers things and hides things. We need to think on the things that are pure, good and pure and wholesome. We need to look at Jesus. I never finished the 2 plus 2, did I? I wouldn't let you guys shout out. 2 plus 2 equals Jesus. Contrary to what you've been taught by your teachers, Jesus is the answer for everything. That's easy to remember, too. And he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. Okay, going back to the image. Anybody know anything about silversmiths? And they sit and they work the silver. What do you know about it, Nancy? I've made custom jewelry. I've done it all. The more heat you add to it, the purer the silver comes, too. But you have to purify it. Yes. Which is like the Bible to us. Yes. You put borax in it, pulls all the impurities. Pulls, I use, I use that on my gold too. It actually melts at a lower temperature when I melt my gold. That's right. Here's the thing when it becomes pure, it reflects the image of the silversmith That's right. in it. Yeah. It bears the very image. You see? If you read your scripture, you'll find that God's will and his purpose is for the image of his dear son to be reproduced in us. Not something like Jesus, not an imitation of Jesus, not a bunch of religious regulations that control you and make you do one thing and 
cannot go another. It's not that. It's a very life of God on the inside of you that frees you from all that so that you walk and you live in righteousness. It's not you trying to keep a bunch of rules and regulations. It's about the life of God and the Spirit of God that will keep you now and forever.
He was the bringer of the new covenant. And even when he was here bringing forth, what was his message? The kingdom of heaven is now available to man. The kingdom available of, of, of heaven is at hand. And it drove out darkness. It drove out sickness and disease. It drove out demonic forces. And light came into lives everywhere. The only ones that he, where he couldn't do a mir great miracles, the Bible says that he could only heal a few colds and simple, you know, uh, fevers he drove out. Because that's where he came from. And he was without honor in his own hometown because they knew who he was. And they stumbled at him and were offended at him. Don't let offense stop the blessings of God in your life. Keep your eyes on him. Unstop the flow of the Spirit to receive all that God has for you. Release those who have done you wrong. Your enemies, love them like they were your friends. And watch the power of God flow. They were beating the life out of Stephen with stones because of his message of the gospel. And he looks up into heaven and he sees the Father and the Son and they stand up. And he says, Father, don't hold this against them and release them. Well, Saul of Tarsus was one of the ones that he was kind of the leader of the whole bunch, having this young man stoned to death with his bones beaten, the skin beaten off of his bones. And this young man says, forgive them? I mean, some of you struggle with forgiving somebody over some silly thing. They were beating the life out of him and killing him. And he still released them. And put Saul of Tarsus on a collision course with God because the man he killed released him and he met God face on. That's gospel. <clears throat> I like the healing all. I like the healing all for it. I like it. And we were witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to the witnesses chosen by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. Here we got eyewitnesses testifying to this right. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Whoever believes and received. I don't know, that, that, that's powerful stuff right there. He goes on to say that as he was preaching, I'm just going to kind of cut short because I want to get to another scripture somewhere here, um, that the Holy Spirit would just pour out on them when they began to speak in tongues and prophesy and they were all filled and people were looking around because there just wasn't Jews there. There was in Greeks, and you know about those Greeks. There was all sorts of Gentiles there. And God began to fill them with the Spirit of God. Peter says, hey, look, we can go get some water now. You can see God doesn't, isn't respect for persons. Let's get these folks baptized. They were being baptized. That was the baptism of fire they were experiencing. See, they were still stuck in the, you got to understand this when you read they were stuck in the mindset of the law still. You understand that? But John the Baptist preached to this. He said, I baptize with water, but comes, one comes after me who is mightier than I, and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Somebody say, Yes, I believe that. I believe that. And I received yeah. that baptism of Jesus. I want that baptism of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, God. And make me a spirit walker in your name. I want to see spiritual things, and I want to hear spiritual words from heaven. Father, don't close up the heavens, but open them up to us so that we might know our destiny, and we might know who we are and where we're going. And we don't want to miss it, so we want to know what it looks like, God. You receive that? Y'all need to be filled with the Spirit right now in Jesus' name.
Rome because of your status and position. And, and even God being God and, 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 was, and the human race and all of creation was created through the mouth of the word, which is now Jesus in human form. I want you to take this in and digest this spiritually. Don't try to, try to figure it out here. It's not going to work. Just receive it. Let it be spirit and life to you. And here we've got the Son of God. And Father's heart is to rescue. So he's got to send the best he has. And he wants to send the word because the word always accomplishes what he sends it to do. And it never returns back to God in your void. But it completes the task at hand. So that's why he wanted to send the word. And he says, Jesus, Jesus doesn't refuse. Nor think that there's a problem because he is in equality with God. Because he is part of God. But he still comes. Okay, this is the mind of Christ. Well, but yet we get so ticked off if somebody overlooks us. Or somebody rejects us. Or somebody makes up something about us. We just have to go ballistic. Get over it, kids. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand and take on the mind of Christ and let it operate in you so that you can do the unthinkable, so that the impossible will flow through you. Because if you're standing in your own will and trying to work these things out in your own soul, you're never going to make it. You, that whole thing, what would Jesus do? It's going to leave you hanging on a cliff by yourself and you're going to wonder what happened. Because it's not about you duplicating the things that Jesus does. It's about letting Jesus live in you. That's the only way you can do the impossible thing. That's the only way you can forgive the unforgivable and love the unlovable and go where both angels won't tread. The only way you can take dominion back on planet Earth is having Jesus in you because then greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Ridiculous it is to believe that it just happened. It didn't just happen. 
God made it happen. And he did it for you and I. Everything he did, he did with us in mind. Some people get upset because human beings that believe in God begin to elevate themselves and think of themselves great. Well, the Bible says that we are his greatest possession of all creation. He is the one that we are the ones that he looks over and rejoices over. He is, he is the one who became part of his own creation so that he could redeem us and restore us to our rightful place. That's love, folks. You know why I'm preaching like this? Because this is the last service we're going to have together this year. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and being found in the appearance as a man. So we're still talking about the mind of Christ. He humbled himself. 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 Hey, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Let it go. Huh? And he became obedient. He's the righteous one. He's the lover of men's souls. 
He's the one who will never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. When the waters are rolling around you and start to come over you, he's the one that will take you through the waters. When the storms come, when the hurricane blows, when the winds are knocking mountains down, he's the one that will take you through the tempest. If your ship is sinking, he's the one that will be in the bow. He's the one that will hold you and keep you in safety. Amen. All you got to know who's in the ship. All those guys up there in the storms freaking out and screaming and they run down and I wake up to Jesus. He's like sleeping in the storm. And he says, peace. Why does the elements obey him? Because they recognize his voice. He created everything. He said, peace be still. The Bible says, suddenly. Suddenly, there was a great calm. So it was miraculous in every way. The elements just immediately dropped it, and the sea became smooth like glass. I want to see that. I hope God's got a video. <laughs> Every knee shall bow of those things in heaven and of those things on earth and of those things under the earth. Now, this is one of those, those things that I, I've asked God, and, and all he would say was, because, you know, the heavens belong to the Lord. The earth is he's given to the sons of man. There's something that he was, now he's told me a lot of things, crazy things, that, 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 that science is still fighting over. God gave me the answer immediately. It was a second. I asked him, he told me. And some things I asked him, and remember I was talking about the heavens and the earth and the visible and the invisible, you know, like the heavens. And I asked him about this, what, what is that? And, he's, and he, all he would say was, well, there's spiritual implication there, but it refers to all the above. <laughs> he didn't want to tell me all. I wanted them. So what else is up there in the visible heavens that you won't tell me about? I would really want to know. And he goes, well, you would probably tell everybody. <laughs> You know, it would shock you for him to ever show up and say, I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Yeah. That probably means I'm leaving the planet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you rebuke me, brother. Oh, hey, I'm going to stay in this earth suit as long as I can. Yeah. I don't think you're going. Okay. Now, heaven's already in me. Where would I go? Of those things, I'm going to say, I'm going to read this again, okay? So we can think about this. The, Kind of think about, I want you all to get your spiritual, you know, get that stir inside of you and start thinking about some of this. Maybe I can get some of you to go read some scripture. Look, I will take emails, uh, phone calls sometimes, depends on where it is, but my phone already drives me crazy. I don't even have it on there. I just bring it out at home. So I'm not ignoring you. Don't trip out if I don't answer your phone call. I'll get back to you and just leave a message. If you call me and don't leave a message, I probably won't call you back. Maybe my answer they might be. Uh, here we go again. We're on two, it's eight o'clock. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of those things in heaven, and of those things on earth, and those things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Listen to this, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You see, I believe that believers should understand and know the meanings of words and the glory of God. I mean, a, the glory of, of, of the manifestation of God, many things were revealed through his handiwork, okay? Through his fingertips when he created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says that the, the heavens declares the glory of God. Glory is a manifestation of something. Uh, so when God created the heavens and the earth, it shows his glory. But when he revealed his arm through the coming of his son to planet earth, now that was a manifestation of God's glory. Because it showed his full intent and purpose toward the human race. That God is love. Jesus spent his entire ministry in telling stories and parables about the Father. About, you guys are not understanding this, look and listen. God isn't out to judge everybody, he's out to save the human race. He doesn't care about your sacrifice. He says this to the religious people, Jesus himself, twice. He doesn't care about all your religious sacrifices. He cares about a relationship. Amen. Amen. 
He cares about you and him getting together. That's why it says he desires mercy, the love relationship, not sacrifice. Matter of fact, in the scripture, he says your sacrifices have become a stench in my nostrils because you go out and do what you want and you think a turtle dove is going to take care of it. Well, it was impossible for the blood of animals to take away the sins of man. They worked as a shadow and a type of Jesus until Jesus came and shed his own blood on Calvary to take away the sins of man. Well, this has been good. No more talk. I promised somebody we'd be out by eight. Well, I go to eight. Whatever this fellow does. Patrick? Uh, I'm going to say this while Patrick comes out. I might make a standard in a second or two. Listen, th there is no uh, bunch of rigmarole that you've got to go through if you don't know Jesus. If you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, you don't have to sign up in some church or anything. All you simply do, by that very thing that's tugging at your heart right now, you just say, Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I receive you. It is that simple. And that's it. And then you just start walking and let him begin to fill your life and begin to talk to him. I'll, tell, I'll guarantee you this. And this is the hard thing for unbelievers to get. Because if you begin a relationship with him, it is a relationship and you will get to know God in such a special way. And it, he will become more real than the reality of your world around you. As a matter of fact, because of the life of God in you, you'll begin to impact your world around you. And you'll begin to impact those people around you because of the life of the Spirit of God inside of you. He is that powerful. You don't even have to say that. You just let God live in you. And you'll walk into rooms and people will actually go, what was that? I love the effects it has on unbelievers. I love hanging around unbelievers. Christians are the hardest to hang around. <laughs> Because they are not unbelieving believers. Because sinners are just sinners. They, you know, and you tell them something, they used to believe you. If you try to tell a believer something, they're going, don't let that be in scripture. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if that's you and you just want to raise your hand so I can acknowledge you and I'll pray the prayer. If somebody here is going, oh God, see you soon. I get to pray that one hand means I get to pray the prayer with you. <laughs> Is there anybody else? I see another hand. God bless you, sir. Anybody else? Don't want to raise through. All right. One, two, three. Oh, goodness. All right, let's pray. You ready, church? Yes. Jesus, yes. I believe in you. I believe you. I believe you came to planet Earth. I believe you came to planet Earth. To rescue this being. Jesus, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive all my sin. Come into my heart. Bring life. Bring Holy Spirit. Fill me with your purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wasn't that easy? Let's tell Papa. Thank you, Papa, for loving us. Let's say that. This is the last offer, too, by the way, that we get to do this year. This is the last service we'll have together. And I am looking forward to 2014 with you guys. Thank you.